we are doing um, what I believe is my biggest book haul of all time. And I, I, I do know what happened. I was about to say I don't know what happened. I do know what happened. What happened was here. Okay, here's the deal. So your girl cannot resist a sale. That's that's really the long and the short of this entire answer is that while I feel like most Black Friday slash like Cyber Week, whatever deals were kind of trash for 2022, I, I have the Honey app not sponsored, not an ad. I have the Honey plugin on my Chrome browser and it tells me when there's coupons available. And for some reason there were hella book coupons available for this holiday season. So it's like, how am I supposed to resist when a book I've had on my wish list for a long time has dropped down to $7 with the coupon? Like, what am I, am I supposed to just not get it? I think not, right? Like, you tell me. I just, I, I couldn't resist. That was just the long and the short of it. So there's that. The other thing is, is that this is a combined haul for two months. So this is over the course of November and December. This includes gifts for the holidays and pre-orders like a lot of pre-orders. So that's how it happened. We have more than 50 books to talk about. I will go ahead and just tell you though, that I also removed 71 books from my TBR. So I added 55 books to my TBR, but I removed 71 for the month. So for November and December, I was negative 16 books. And that brought my overall yearly TBR change to negative 31 books. So I ended the year with fewer books on my TBR than I started with, despite the monstrous haul you're about to see, which I just realized is kind of a funny pun for one of the books that I picked up. Anyway, enough talking because we have so many books to get through. I'm gonna go mostly by category because I don't have time to be here just all day talking about each and every one of these 50 books, but we'll talk about them in categories and yeah. Let's just get into it. I gotta help us all. Okay, let's start with some new release pre-order edge. So first of all, Friends Like Me by Jennifer Lynn Alvarez. This is a book that I picked up because I went to my friend Alexa Dunn's book signing at Parnassus here in Nashville. And it was a co-event with her friend Jennifer. And Jennifer, just hearing her talk about this book, totally sold it to me. It is a YA thriller with a missing girl trope, which is not normally my thing. But hearing her talk about it completely sold it to me. So this was a new release that came out and I picked up at that event. And then two pre-orders, both of these YA, all of these new release were YA. Uh, a Million to One by Adiba Jaigirdar. This is a on the Titanic treasure hunt thriller, which just sounded like it was gonna be super fun. So I don't know, I've not really heard people saying if this was good or not, but I just think this sounds really fun. So we're gonna give it a try. And then Five Survive by Holly Jackson, because this sounded like kind of an isolated close circle thriller. And I did really like A Good Girl's Guide to Murder. I wanna see what happens. I think that this is a standalone. So I wanna see how she does with this versus the series. And I need to read that series in 2023. But anyway, those were my new release pre-orders. You know that it is a full month when I'm just grouping my beloved Penguin Cloth Bounds uh, in one category. So there was the second drop of the Penguin Cloth Bound, Little Cloth Bound Classics, is that what they're called? The, the, new, the new line that they're doing um, with Coralie Bigford Smith that are these smaller, shorter works. I had like a review of this series in one of my hauls, so I'll try to link that somewhere if you wanna know my thoughts. And I think at some point I'm gonna go through and do like a individual photo individual showing of these books on either YouTube shorts or on Instagram, like in my feed. So at some point I'll go, I'll show these in more detail, but for now I'll just tell you that in this drop is O. Henry's The Gift of the Magi, Oscar Wilde's The Star Child, Karen Blitzen's Babette's Feast, Truman Capote's Breakfast at Tiffany's, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle's The Adventure of the Blue Carbuncle, Dorothy Parker's Big Blonde, Saki's Reginald's Christmas Revel, E.T.A. Hoffman's The Nutcracker, if you can't tell a lot of these are holiday themed, Virginia Woolf's Street Haunting, Leo Tolstoy's The Cossacks, Yasunari Kawabata's Snow Country, and 
Anna Kevin's Ice. So like I said, I'll talk about these in more detail on one of my other socials or in YouTube shorts. And then I also have all of the Clothbound Classics, at least all that I can find, linked in my Amazon storefront list. So if you're ever looking for the full list, that's where it is. Okay, so again, you know it's a big month when that's just like a part of the flow here. But that did also account for some of the volume because that was 12 books in that drop. Uh, another pre-order collection thing, and this was the pun I alluded to earlier, is the second book of Monstrous. So the way it works is that there are the individual like comics, like so the, the individual chapters or stories, those then get combined into a bind up that are volumes. So, so far there have been seven volumes. And then three of the volumes eventually get bound up into a hardback book. So this is book two of Monstrous. I have book one here. And so now I have volumes one through six in the books. And then I have volume seven as a standalone until we get to the point where it gets put into a book. So uh, I absolutely love Monstrous. This is one of my all time favorite fantasy series. Definitely a whole is greater than the sum of its part kind of situation. But I love the story. I love the art, the world. It's all amazing. So very excited to have the second book. And yeah, okay, I think that those are all the pre orders. So a couple of books that were gifted to me that are also in collections. Um, my mother, Mom Like Woe, gave me two of the Penguin Vitae's that just came out for Christmas. So I got The Portrait of a Lady by Henry James. Love, it's very chunky. I love the foiling and the color combo on this one. And then she also gave me The Custom of the Country by Edith Wharton, which is not as chunky, but is still beautiful. We can continue on the collection theme here. So next is a subterranean special edition that I pre-ordered 15 months ago, 18 months ago. So does this even really count? I don't think so, right? I mean, I paid for this. This was like Mara with an entirely different life who pre-ordered this, right? So yeah, um, The Library of Mount Char by Scott Hawkins is the subterranean special edition example of some of the art and it is also they always do the same number where possible if you have had previous books from them and it is also signed by the author so so lovely so wonderful and like i said surprised that it finally showed up because i pre-ordered it so long ago that when it arrived i was like oh yeah yeah i did pre-order that okay pass more good looking out Okay, and then let's finish the collection by also transitioning into books that were on sale. And this is the biggest category of everything in this haul. There were so many things that went on sale. So first of all, this Chiltern Classics edition of Mrs. Dalloway. This was on sale for I think $8. How was I supposed to say no to that? Beautiful. I love these editions. The covers are absolutely lovely. And then they have like gilded pages that feel like Bible, like nice fancy Bible pages. So beautiful. Happy to have this for such an affordable price. And then the astrology edition of the Library of Esoterica went on sale. And I think I got like a $15 coupon. I think I only paid like $12 for this. And these are absolutely gorgeous. If you're at all interested in, you know, some of this esoteric stuff, like the illustrations in these are beautiful. I have the astrology one and the tarot one. And they're just lovely to look at if nothing else. But I have it as a nice little matcheroo on my shelf. And for again, that price, I just I couldn't resist. I'm weak and I couldn't resist. Okay, and then good Lord. Okay, all of these I had coupons for and got for let's say I paid no more than $12 for any of the ones we're about to see because of the couponage. And most of them were like seven or $8. And I couldn't resist. Okay, it just it's like against my religion to resist that kind of deal. Mom like whoa, inculcated me with this principle. And it it's just a part of who I am. Okay, so some of these also are sequels to things that I had wanted to read. Yeah, a few of them are. So first of all, Unravel the Dusk by Elizabeth Lem. This is the sequel to Spend the Dawn. It's a duology. So this will finish up the series. And God bless duologies. I want more of them. So I grabbed this to finish up that series. When I was on the Book Communa Read live stream about the book Ace, somebody recommended 
Refusing Compulsory Sexuality, A Black Asexual Lens on Our Sex-Obsessed Culture by Sharonda L. Sharonda J. Brown. And uh, this topic I'm interested in. So, you know, on sale. Had to get it. How to Survive Your Murder by Danielle Valentine. This is a YA thriller that's like a courtroom drama. And it was on my books I was anticipating in 2022, but never got around to. But guess what? I'm gonna get around to it now because I got it for like $8. Uh, another 22 release that I had my eye on that I've heard good buzz about is The Honeys by Ryan LaSala. And actually I think what made me put this on my like wish list was I saw a really amazing TikTok from him that sold the hell out of this. So I had to grab it. I think it's sort of like a click of girls and then like something murdery happens if I'm remembering rightly. But I've seen really good reviews of this, not just from him, but from other book talk booktubers. So I had to get to this. Both of these two, I, if I'm remembering rightly, I put on my wish list because I'm pretty sure that they are isolated close circle thrillers or isolated thriller adjacent. YA picks. So we have You're So Dead by Ash Parsons. The tagline is they're dying for followers. I'm actually curious to see how this maybe compares to something like Never Coming Home since that also has the follower angle. And then 14 Ways to Die by Vincent Ralph. The tagline is one killer, 13 victims, a million views. Again, I'm not sure that this is totally an isolated close circle thriller, but it has, it seems like some of those kinds of elements. And again, a social media component, which I tend to like. And then two Japanese classic mysteries that I've had on my wish list forever. One is The Hojin Murders by Seishi Yokomizo. This goes along with one of my goals for 2023, which is to read more mystery and translation, as does this, Murder in the Crooked House uh, by Soji Shimada. And this is a classic Japanese locked room mystery. So I think this is an isolated close circle one. On the night of the wedding, the Iki Yanagi household are woken by a terrible scream, followed by the sound of eerie music. Death has come to Okamura, leaving no trace but a bloody samurai sword thrust into the pristine snow outside the house. Snow, we love it. This plays into one of my goals. And as mentioned many times at this point, on sale. Another isolation mystery that I picked up is Nowhere to Hide. Uh, again, it seems like an isolated thriller. The tagline is seven friends, one killer. You can run, but there's nowhere to hide. So seems like it's in the snow. Seems like people are getting murdered. Seems like it's a book for Mara. And then the Marlowe Murder Club uh, by Robert Thorogood. The tagline is these ladies take death seriously. I remember a few different people have recommended this to me in various comment sections. And since it was on sale, I decided to go for it. We'll see how I do. I think it's kind of cozy-ish. Uh, and I think it might be one that gets recommended to people who like the Richard Osgood, is that his name, series, the Thursday Murder Club series. I think this is kind of in that same vibe. Okay, two more that were sale picks. Uh, another sort of esoterica choice was Spellcrafting uh, by Erin Murphy Hiscock. And I want to say that Sam from Thoughts on Tomes, I saw this in a recommendation video from her at some point, but it went on sale and I think it was like eight bucks. So pick that up. And then the other sequel that was on sale, this might've been the most expensive one. This I might've actually like paid 13 or $14 for. I know, wild. Uh, Jade Legacy by Fonda Lee. I've read the first one. I already had the second one. And then this is the finale. So now I have all of them. I'm hoping to finish up this trilogy in 2023. We'll see how that goes, but that's my thought process. Okay, those were all the ones I got online via sale. And one day when I was at Target, there was a buy two, get one free in their book section. So again, how could I resist? So I picked up Backyard Witchcraft, which I've already read, not the best, but it does have some pretty illustrations. So I'm gonna keep it mostly for that but this was the one that I counted as getting free. So no harm, no foul. I picked up A Venom Dark and Sweet by Judy I. Lin, which is the sequel to a duology that started with A Magic Steeped in Poison, which I really liked in 2022. And I'm planning on wrapping this up in 2023. Another one that I'm finishing up a series with. And then in my ongoing quest to read every book by Nora Roberts, I picked up this new bind up that they had, which has the second two books, I believe, in the Calhoun series. So it's 
for the love of Lila and Susanna's surrender. I don't remember if I started the Calhoun series last year. I don't think so, but there's four of them, I believe. And at some point I will get to this. Okay, so those were all the sale ones. Let's talk about two that I feel less shameful about because they're less shameful to me. <laughs> they're not just like, oh, that sounds good. The Night Eaters by Marjorie Liu and Sana Takata. This is the same author illustrator combo that writes Monstrous. And one of my coworkers, who's also a book nerd, we were talking and she mentioned to me that there was a new series from them out. And I was like, I have heard nothing about this. How is this possible? So I had to pick up a copy because I love what they've done in Monstrous. So I've got to see what I think about this. I think that this is more horror based. That being said, I would describe Monstrous as fantasy borderlining horror at times. So we'll see what they do when they go full horror. And then uh, another one that wraps up a duology that I started in 2022. I got The Parable of the Talents by Octavia Butler. The first one was The Parable of the Sower, which I really enjoyed that. And I've heard that this one is way better, according to a lot of people. So very excited to see how I do with this uh, to wrap up that duology. And then I can't show you most of these books, but I have a specific group reading project that I'm working on that you will see in February. So I can't tell you about these books right now, but this is the stack. There's seven of these plus one that I already had that I've got to read. Uh, and sh I'll give you a, a sneak peek. One of them is Into the Water by Paula Hawkins. Stay tuned in mid-February for that secret TBR project. Um, I read, dissected, and vlogged Kane's Jawbone. So I got this at the beginning of November and really enjoyed this project. Can't remember if you guys have seen the vlog for this yet. I think so, but if not, it should be coming soon. Uh, and then our January Blades and Bodice Ripper book club pick is Lud in the Mist by Hope Mirlees. This is a fairy based fantasy that was written and released before The Lord of the Rings or Tolkien. So this is sort of like origins of fantasy kind of book. And uh, yeah, I'm excited to see what happens with this. I'm hoping I'm gonna really love it but that was Leanna's pick. And then finally, books that I got, I'm gonna say most of these as things that I saw other people mentioning as some of the best of the year. So, The Violin Conspiracy by Brendan. I think it's some kind of like conspiracy thriller, which is something that I tend to really like. So I saw this on a number of people's best of the year list from like news outlets. Um, like I feel like a lot of newspapers pick this as a best of the year, so. Intrigued? Want to try it. I've already read this one, The Twyford Code by Janice Hallett. Uh, I got this as a recommendation from Meg at Meg with Books. She really liked this. And also Janice Hallett has a third book coming out in January. So I wanted to read this because I'd already read The Appeal and I'll have read all of her stuff by the time I read the one coming out in January. So really enjoyed this knot. I didn't like this probably as much as I like The Appeal, but about the same. Uh, if you know, you know, I am hoarding the Kingfisher books because I've decided that she's a new favorite author and she has a gigantic backlist and I'm just picking up ones that people recommend to me that sound good. So this is Sword Heart. And I've realized since I picked this up that it is in the same world as her Clockwork Boys series. So let me know if I need to read that series before I get to this one. I don't know. I've had a number of people recommend this to me, so that makes me think no. But if you have read both and you think I should read Clockwork Boys books first, let me know. Threads of Life. This is one that I have had on my TBR for a while, A History of the World Through the Eye of a Needle. But I saw two different people mention this as some of their favorite nonfiction of the year. And I love nonfiction about the history of fashion and fabric arts. So this is up my alley. I think I need, I've got a few of those on my TBR right now. Maybe I need to like make a little group reading project. But yeah, since I saw other people talking about how much they enjoyed it this year, it felt like a sign. The Three Dahlias by Katie Watson. This has been pitched as an Agatha Christie-esque Country House Weekend murder mystery. And I'm a sucker for that. That's one of my favorite kinds of mysteries. And so I have to try it, right? Right? Yeah, right. And then last but not least, True Crime Story by Joseph Knox. This is a multimedia book, which I am an absolute sucker for. It's a mystery book and Meg with Books loved it. So another 
you know, recommendation from her side of things. And she's my book twin, so I trust her. Okay, I... I feel exhausted now talking about all those books uh, and not even going into that much detail about them. Hopefully you guys enjoyed my overabundance of consumption for November and December. If you can't tell, I'll say it again, I am a sucker for a sale and I, you know, have been brought up under capitalism and just get such a thrill from it. So what can we say? I enjoyed it. I enjoyed all the sale finds that I got. Let me know if any of these books sound interesting to you. Let me know if you got books that you're excited to read for Christmas or for the holidays. Uh, let me know that in the comments below. And yeah, I think that will do it for me. I'm looking forward to going back to normal haulage that's a little less over the top. So if you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, follow me on the social medias if you are so inclined. I have all that information listed in the description box below, and I think that that will do it. We're having an absolutely lovely day today, and I will just talk to you soon.